What's up, YouTube? Today, we're reviewing the 2022 Volvo XC40 Recharge Twin Plus. Huge thank you to Jamer Heasley over at Don Buyer Volvo Cars of Dulles, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you're interested in this particular XC40 or any Volvo product, I'll be sure to have his information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the exterior and performance. And like I said, this is a 2022 Volvo XC40 and this particular one is painted in black. So let's start up here at the top of the hood. You guys can see you have these two pretty aggressive body lines. Uh, it seems like the outer body line is just a little bit more aggressive than the one on the inside. At least that's what it picks up like on the camera and it kind of looks like that in person as well. Uh, I think it looks super, super aggressive uh, and it gives the car a sporty look. Uh, and obviously the same thing on the passenger side as well. But let's start over here while these headlights are still on. You do have your LED daytime running light right here as you guys can see. You also have LED headlamps as well as your LED fog lamps down here. But your LED headlamps come with active high beams as well as active bending lights. So if you guys are driving down the road and it's pretty dark at night and you guys are making a right turn, the active bending lights basically turn the lights to the right. Um, just to give you guys a little bit more visibility at night. But moving down here, like I said, LED fog lamps, you have a plastic trim surround around those fog lamps. But just above that, integrated into the front bumper, you guys can see you have your forward facing sensors down here, down here, right here, right there. This particular car does have the $1,100 climate package. So you guys do get these high pressure headlight washers right here. Um, so if you guys do not get the climate package, you guys do not get those high pressure headlight washers. But moving over here to the front grill, not much of a front grill, but they still made it look very, very good. You have your black grill surround right here. And this front grill is more of like a black panel right here. The only remnants of a front grill that you would see kind of like on a gas powered vehicle is these grill bars down here just small probably like an inch maybe an inch and a half uh, opening right there so that's kind of like the grill bars that you would see on a internal combustion engine volvo but that's kind of like the only remnants of like a gas powered front grill that you see uh, on this car otherwise it's just that black panel right there but right at the center of the front grill you guys can see you have your volvo logo right there as well as your forward facing camera integrated into that logo take a step back look at the xc40 from the front it's a pretty sporty looking vehicle like i said but moving over here to the side let's move into these wheels these are a 20 inch wheel and these are an 800 option as you guys can see it's got a machined aluminum face with the black pockets and i think that both of the machined aluminum and the black come together just to make it again look very very sporty but these 20 inch wheels are wrapped around in a pirelli all season 235 45 r 20 inch tire right there and i'll show you guys that tread pattern as you can see but moving over here as you guys can see you do have a black window surround around all the windows you also have a black roof rail at the top moving over here you do have your black mirror caps right here with your integrated turn signal into the mirrors just below all of that you do have a camera right here that goes along with your 360 degree view camera that this vehicle does come with with the twin plus trim level moving over to here your door panels are paint matched this does have keyless access all you got to do is put your hand behind here the vehicle will unlock however if you do want to lock the vehicle you see this little square right here run your finger across that it locks mirrors fold in just like that and you can do the same from the rear door handle as well open it up just like that as you can see mirrors come out or you can lock it like that as well but moving to the bottom of these two doors, you guys can see you have this plastic body cladding right here, as well as your plastic fender flares, both on all four corners of the vehicle. 
Right over here, just below your roof rails, you guys can see you have a recharge emblem right here that looks super, super sleek. Another thing that looks super, super sleek is this rear spoiler right here. It's a very big rear spoiler and it looks super sporty, super sleek, and you have your third brake light integrated into that. But moving back over here, you do have your charging port so you can fill up at all the Electrify America stations for free for one year. Uh, but closing that, again, those 20 inch wheels. However, these tires back here are a 255 40 and like I said, they are on a 20 inch wheel. So 20 millimeters wider tires in the rear uh, as they would be in the front. And that's because this thing is very quick from zero to 60. And we'll get into that when we get into performance. But you do have your rear wiper blade right here as well as your Volvo written across the power lift gate. You also have your recharge twin. Uh, emblem right there as well as your XC40 emblem right here on the driver's side moving to the rear bumper as you guys can see you have a reflector right here with a halogen light in there as well as the same thing on the passenger side reflector right here halogen light in there as well as your rear sensors that go across the rear bumper as you guys can tell one thing that I did want to show you guys is the rear valence is also painted in black. But another thing is that this does have a power lift gate. So all you got to do is have your key fob in your pocket and uh, put your hand behind here and the power lift gate will open up just like that. You could probably fit three or four medium sized uh, suitcases back here. So it's actually a pretty decent sized trunk. And if you guys want a little bit more space, you guys can also fold down this second row of seating right here, which I'll do right now. Just like that. Just like that. And uh, that reveals that much more storage space. This is for uh, your luggage privacy. So we'll take that out and I'll show you guys. You could probably fit now, maybe five, six, seven, eight suitcases back here. Uh, so that makes it a lot more open for a lot more storage space back here. But one more thing before I put this thing back uh, into the vehicle, pull up on this and it reveals that much more storage space. So you got a good amount of storage space here as well as your jack right here. So if you get a flat tire, you can jack the car up and replace your tire. Um, so that's that. Closing that and putting this thing back in just like that. You also do have a light right here another light right here, a little bit of a storage cubby on the passenger side, and an even smaller storage cubby over here on the driver side. But closing that power lift gate by the push of that button, you guys can see you have your rear view camera right there and the button to open up that power lift gate. But if you guys don't want to push that button for the power lift gate, you can also open up the lift gate right here by the push of this button on the key fob. So we'll push that button and the power lift gate will open up just like this. And you can also close it from the key fob as well. And it goes beep, 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 letting you know that it is closing. But before we move into performance, it's kind of interesting because this is one of the first electric vehicles that I've reviewed. Normally I would do my little intro into performance by opening up the door just like this and pop open the front hood like so and uh, let's pop open that front hood and look at what's going on up here because opening this up you would normally see a gas powered motor but you're like what the heck there's no motor up here and obviously you guys know because you guys are looking at an electric vehicle video however you have a front trunk up here which is pretty cool um, so you can fit a, a couple things in here you could probably fit a phone or two um, and that is like to um, fill up your tire and it's got like some gook in it to, to basically fill the tire and patch the tire uh, but closing that you could probably fit a macbook pro like 13 inch on this side and then another one over here so you're not going to fit that 16 inch macbook pro if uh, you guys got that mac daddy macbook pro However, if you do get rid of this thing here in the middle, uh, and that's just a flat space, you could fit the Mac Daddy MacBook Pro under here. Closing that, you guys can hear it shut. This is where you fill up your windshield washer fluid. So not much going on under here um, that we can see anyway. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what's going on up here under this front hood. But with that said, let's move into performance.
Powering the XC40 is a 78 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery that makes 402 horsepower and 486 pound feet of torque. This does have permanent all wheel drive because you do have front and rear electric motors. You also have a 223 mile electric range, which is up 15 miles from last year from 208 miles to 223 miles for 2022. And with all those numbers in mind, you're able to achieve a zero to 60 time of 4.3 seconds, which is very, very impressive uh, for a vehicle like this. I guess you wouldn't assume that this thing could do a 4.3 seconds, zero to 60. I guess I wouldn't right off the bat. Um, so yeah, pretty impressive considering this is a 4.3 second, zero to 60. I mean, yeah, it does look pretty sporty, but right off the bat, if you guys know nothing about cars, you would expect this thing maybe to get a, maybe a five, six, seven second, zero to 60, but 4.3 seconds, very impressive. And you can definitely tell that it is a 4.3 second, zero to 60 when you get into driving it. But we'll talk about that when we are on the driving portion of the review. But the, let me just tell you before we do that, you have a very linear acceleration. You have a leather type material up here at the top of the door panel that follows through to your armrest right here. You got some little plastic trim pieces right in here. And you got this pretty cool pattern right here next to your aluminum door handle. Two memory seat adjustment settings right there. Here is your speaker. You also have automatic up and down windows at all four corners. These are for your mirrors right here. Um, so to adjust your mirrors, that's what that does right there. To lock all your windows, that's what that does as well. And to unlock or lock the vehicle, you can do that right there. Moving to the bottom of the door panel right here. As you guys can see, you got a pretty good amount of storage space at the bottom of this door panel and you can fit a pretty big water bottle right here. So you could probably fit small umbrellas, stuff like that. So very good amount of storage space right there. Before we step in, as you guys can see, we have a recharge door sill right there, as well as a power driver and a power passenger seat right there. At the center of the driver's seat, as well as at the center of all the other seats in the vehicle, you do have an Alcantara suede, as well as your bolsters are in leather with that beautiful white accent colored stitching. Headrest is the same, it's like that Alcantara suede. Just looks super, super premium, just like these HVAC vents. Black trim piece around that with that beautiful aluminum trim piece at the center. And to open or close your HVAC vents, all you gotta do is twist it to the right, twist it to the left, and uh, that's how you open and close them. And obviously, you can move them up and down, left and right, as you please, uh, but yeah. Stepping in to the XC40 recharge, you guys might be able to note that there is no push button start or like a regular gas powered Volvo. There's no like turn to start the vehicle. So that's kind of a learning curve if you guys are coming from another Volvo vehicle that is gas powered. Um, so yeah, the only way to turn this thing on is to go into drive, but it kind of senses when you hop into the vehicle. So you can turn your radio on, uh, which it is on right now. So if I press play, it will start playing the radio. Um, it is playing, but the song just finished. You do have a nine inch infotainment screen right here, as well as a 12.3 inch driver information screen right here. But I'm gonna throw her back into park because I threw her into drive to turn her on just, just to show you guys what's going on up here. Uh, but you do have two different modes. So this is calm. Push this button right here and we go into Navi. So you got your speedometer right over here as well as your speed limit sign, digital speedometer right there. Then you got your navigation screen at the center. You have your range right down here as well as all your regenerative braking and accelerating stuff right here on the right side of the 12.3 inch driver information screen. Moving over to here, this is where you find your nine inch infotainment screen and it is a Google based system. Um, so if you guys go into it, uh, you guys can have your Google Maps right here. Push this button right here. This is kind of like your home button and I'm gonna take my gloves off um, just to make it a little bit easier to go throughout the screen. You guys can go through your different sources by swiping over to here. Then you got your radio, FM radio, Sirius XM, Spotify, and right now we are on Bluetooth audio. Go into here, this is your range. You have your estimated range right here as well as your consumption right now. Uh, so that's how much kilowatt hours per 100 miles we are taking up. 
Over here, you've got your speed, driving style, climate control stuff. Um, so you guys can kind of watch that as you're driving. Coming over here, you guys see that little camera button. Like I said, 360 degree view camera. You can go to your side view camera, go back over here. You got your forward facing camera, go back. This is your passenger side camera right here, as well as your rear view camera right there. Obviously, your rear view camera comes on uh, when you guys throw this thing into reverse. So just push, go into reverse like that. Now we're in reverse. Push to go into park, kind of pull all the way back to go into drive, and then just pull slightly to go into neutral. <laughs> One thing I did want to mention is just how beautiful these pedals are down here. They are aluminum pedals, so they look super, super sporty, but they also have that rubber grip that kind of goes uh, across in slashes. So it looks super, super sporty. But moving over here to our steering wheel, you guys can see you have your Volvo logo right at the center of that. These buttons over here control your volume, so I can volume up, volume down like that, go forward on a song by pushing that button to go backward on a song, you push that button. But these buttons also control different things. So if I push this button right here, brings up my trip manual right here, which brings up my odometer, kind of average speed, stuff like that. So these are two different um, trips right here. As you guys can see how long we've been driving, stuff like that, kilowatts per 100 miles, how far we've driven on this certain trip. You can also press and hold that button to restart, uh, or you can just go back like that. Personally, I kind of like this mode. You guys can see your exact um, speed right there. This is for your adaptive cruise control right here. So if you want to be closer to a car, you push that. Farther away from the car, you push that. And obviously, cruise control stuff right there. Moving over to here, this dial right here is to adjust the brightness of the screen, as well as this button right here opens up your power lift gate back there. Uh, obviously, you've got your turn signal stock right here. You can turn on your fog lamps by these two buttons right here and here. I'm going to take my other glove off. You can turn on your auto high beams like that, as well as your on auto headlights right now. These are headlights always on. These are daytime running lights on, and these are headlights off. We'll just leave it in auto for right now. Like I said, these are your fog lamp controls right here. To turn on your high beams, you just push on like that or pull back like that. Um, yeah. Turn signal stock, obviously, as well. You guys can listen to that turn signal. Horn. Leather wrapped steering wheel. This is heated. Like I said, this does have the $1,100 climate package. So what you get with that $1,100 climate package, like I mentioned when we were up front, you do get that high pressure headlight cleaner as well as heated rear seats. You get this heated steering wheel and you get a heat pump. Uh, but moving over to here, these are all your windshield washer controls. So pull back on like that and uh, you guys can see it is washing the windows. You can also control that rear wiper back there as well through this stock here. Uh, but looking at the steering wheel, you guys can see you got that aluminum trim around pretty much all the buttons and then that aluminum trim at the bottom of that steering wheel. Moving over to here, you guys can see, like I said, you got your infotainment screen. You can go into your different settings and stuff like that. Um, but moving back over to here, pretty much all your different stuff right here. Range Assistant, Google Assistant, Play Store, Owner's Manual, Car Status, stuff like that. Whatever you guys want to put on screen, you guys can do so. But pull down from the top, you got all your notifications. So think of this as kind of like a Google iPad in a way. Um, that's the best way that I can kind of put it. It kind of acts like a Google tablet. So it's pretty easy to get used to, uh, but it does definitely take a little bit of getting used to. So if you guys are within this car for like 15 to 20 minutes, you guys will start to understand it. It's not that difficult, uh, but heated seats, heated steering wheel, no ventilated seats. As you guys might be able to tell, you do not have perforated leather. So like I said, heated seats and heated steering wheel. Climate control settings right here. If you guys want to turn it all the way up, you can push this max button, but we're going to leave it on one just because we don't need all that um, heating up right now because the car's already pretty good. These are all your different climate control settings. You got your max defroster, rear defroster, recirculating air. You guys know what's going on. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much that. You got your piano black trim around that screen with your HVAC vents on both sides. More of that cool pattern right here on your dash as well as on your passenger door panel, driver door panel. Uh, and yeah, moving down here, this is your volume knob right here. 
You can play or pause by pushing that button to go back on a song, to go forward on a song. Pushing this button on other Volvos opens up your glove box. However, this is just a manual opening glove box like that. So you guys can do that. You also have a hook right there. You got your hazard button right here. Your defroster, just push that and that will turn on your defroster for the front rear defroster right there. Moving down to here, you have a 12 volt outlet as well as two USB-C ports right there and a wireless charging pad for your phone right here with a little bit of storage base on the left and right side of that charging pad. Uh, opening this up, you get a little bit of storage space. So if you guys like uh, want to put gum or something like that down in there, pretty small storage space, but you guys can definitely uh, fit your key in there as well. So let me put my key down in there. And that's a good spot to store your key, as you guys can see. Putting that back into my pocket and closing that. Got your really nice leather wrapped shifter right here. Pull all the way back, you're in drive. Push forward just one. You are in neutral, as you guys can see right there and then push all the way forward like that and you guys go into reverse as you guys can see. Push to go into park, now we're in park. Piano black trim around the cup holders. You got two cup holders. Opening this up, this is your center armrest and it is leather wrapped with accent colored white stitching. Looks awesome. Opening this up, you got a little bit of storage space. If you open up this flap down in there, uh, you guys probably fit a phone or something like that down in there, uh, but not much more than that. This is pretty small. You guys probably fit some tissues, straws, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, but it's definitely not the biggest amount. Here, I'll put my glove down in there for reference. Um, so you guys can see that's kind of how big it is. Uh, but taking that out, there's my glove, my glove on this part right here so it's actually a pretty decent sized uh, center console but a couple things that I wanted to mention before we moved into those rear seats is that this does have blind spot information system with steer assist as well as cross traffic alert and auto braking you also have some collision avoidance systems that include low and high speed collision mitigation that can detect vehicles pedestrians as well as cyclists you also have your driver alert control with automatic braking after collision run off road protection and run off road mitigation lane departure warning with lane keeping aid and you also have your front and rear park assist that comes with the twin plus but i'm going to show you guys the window sticker real quick right here uh, and if you guys want to pause your screen you guys can do so right now but i'm going to kind of show you guys each thing then get your performance stuff you got your technology and audio stuff safety and security luxury and convenience and like i said you do get one year complimentary of the electrify america charging systems over here these are your plus features and the msrp of this particular vehicle is fifty eight thousand two hundred and ninety five dollars um, but if you guys are enjoying this video so far please give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button. I'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do that without your guys' help. So please, if you guys would, please give this video a thumbs up. Like I said, please hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what your guys' opinion is of the XC40 recharge. And would you guys get the XC40 gas powered one? Or would you guys get the electric XC40? But yeah, moving up to here, you do have this panoramic moonroof right here with a shade. So if you slide that forward, your shade comes up, but we don't want to have that open yet. Uh, if you guys want to uh, open up your power moonroof right here, you just got to apply a little bit more pressure and that will open up just like that. If you guys want that closed, just apply a little bit more pressure again and uh, that will close like that. If you guys just want it to tilt, all you got to do is push up like that and it tilts, push up on that again and it closes. Um, so yeah, you also have a handle right here, a handle right there, and I do want to show you guys what these seats look like again because they are some pretty seats. And this button right here is to open up your front trunk. But let's look at these seats one more time. This does not have the Harman Kardon sound system. However, this sound system still sounds very, very good. But yeah, let's fold these seats up real quick. This side, fold that up. And then step in here, fold this side up, as well as that headrest right there. Seats look pretty much the exact same in the rear as they do in the front. You got that beautiful Alcantara suede that goes down the center of the seat, as well as your side bolsters are in leather with some more of that beautiful 
accented stitching in white, just like the front. Door panel, basically the same as the front. It's just a little bit smaller, same materials used, but you don't get that cool pattern like you do over there uh, on the front, as you can see right there. But still got that aluminum door handle, automatic up and down windows here in the rear. You can also lock the vehicle from the rear as well. Uh, but your door panel space down here is definitely a lot smaller than it was in the front. And you got your speaker down here. But you got a little bit more storage space to the left of your seat right here for snacks or whatever you want to put there, really. Uh, it's a decent amount of storage space. But stepping in, as you guys can see, you get, have your seat back pocket right here, seat back pocket right there. And there's a lot more leg room and knee room in this car than I would have imagined, to be honest, as well as tons and tons of headroom for me. I'm five foot nine, so I'm definitely not the tallest person in the world, but I am adjusted behind myself and I've got plenty of leg room, plenty of knee room and plenty of headroom up top as well. Uh, these armrests right here, just sitting in perfect position honestly for somebody of my height um, i really do like the armrest height uh, it's not too low it's not too high and let's open this up and let's see how that is as well um yeah testing it out it's very very comfortable i got my arm right there resting on that one and arm resting on that one very, very comfortable. They're in the correct spot where you would want them to be. I think this is about as reclined as these seats go and they are in a good position. So you're not sitting at like a 90 degree angle. You got a little bit of leaned backness to it, if that's a word. Uh, but yeah, very comfortable seats. Bolstering is pretty good. Obviously it's not bolstered like the front. However, I can definitely feel the bolstering on my left side right here. Definitely not as much over here to the right, but definitely can feel the bolstering on the left side. And that would be on the right side, on the passenger side. Uh, but again, more of those beautiful HVAC vents. Opening this up, you got two more USB-C ports right there. As well as, like I mentioned, this has the $1,100 climate package, so you also do get heated rear seats back here as well. Opening up the center fold down armrest, you guys see you got two cup holders, but if you guys have two small water bottles, you can also fit a third water bottle or something like that here in the middle. Uh, or you could just set your phone down there uh, across like that or however you want to do it. But one more thing that you can do is that if you guys have a object in your vehicle that is pretty long and you want to send it pretty much all the way through from your trunk, you guys can open this thing up right here and uh, you have that ability to do so. So if you guys have skis, which I'm assure, assuming that's what this is for, uh, you guys can send the skis through and still have four people in the vehicle. But folding this up, all you got to do is like that, and then this nice carpeted piece comes down just like that to uh, cover that and just to make it look a little bit better and maybe uh, make this thing hold up just a little bit better because it's on something soft. Uh, but this is kind of what it looks like from the rear. From my point of view, um, that's what the sunroof looks like. Um, but yeah, you know, we've talked about the exterior now. We've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I want to see what this thing's like to drive. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, guys, now on to the driving portion of the review. And normally I would start this uh, either driving or I would be pushing the button to start up the motor. However, this is an electric vehicle, so all you got to do is step into the car and uh, it basically kind of knows you're in the car, but then to turn it all the way on, you just push your foot on the brake and then pull all the way back. And uh, now we are in drive. So I have driven this car obviously from the dealership to where I am at right now filming the video. And uh, one thing that I did want to say right off the bat, um, is that I'm not really an electric car fan just because I do like the sound uh, of internal combustion engine motors, V6s, flat sixes and Porsches, V8s, V12s, stuff like that. Um, definitely like the sound of a motor. However, for a daily driver, I honestly don't know if I would mind an electric car because, you know, first off, um, I can say that if I hadn't have driven this, I probably would still be like, no, I would never get an electric car. But I actually really like this thing because it doesn't really make any noise. And you can kind of zip around without uh, getting a whole lot of attention drawn to you. And it's just quick. Like, it's just fun. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm not used to that. I think this is, might be the first electric car that I've driven. 
Uh, and I'm not 100% sure on that because I might have driven another car. Um, but I'm pretty sure that this is the first electric car that I've driven that at least I remember. Um, so yeah, it's pretty quick and the throttle is very, very linear. It's almost like you're driving a gas powered vehicle. However, you don't have any of like the jerkiness or whatever, not jerkiness, but just like that second where it's shifting in between gears there's nothing like that it's just super linear and just the throttle itself like when you put more uh put your foot down farther that's kind of how much throttle response you get and i don't know like how to describe it but uh the farther let's just say the farther that you put your foot uh down into the pedal the more you accelerate and it's kind of how much you would expect the car to accelerate if that makes sense so definitely a big fan uh, of the throttle tuning that volvo did uh, on this car and it makes it really fun and one thing that i didn't really i'm not used to because i don't really drive electric vehicles is the regenerative braking so basically i'm just driving right now with one foot when i came up to the stop sign i didn't hit the brake at all so you can drive this thing with one pedal it's called like one pedal driving or whatever um and you really can drive it with one pedal. The farther you let off the accelerator, the more that it breaks. So I mean, you can really get it to break pretty hard. Like I'm gonna let it fully off right now. And it basically breaks really hard, but it doesn't break like, Ur! it uh, breaks like linearly, if that makes sense, but it'll break linearly hard also. But anyway, uh, that's basically what it does. And I'm actually kind of becoming more of a fan of not only electric vehicles after driving this, but the regenerative brakes. The more I get used to it, the more that I like it because it's less the kind of like effort that you have to put into driving because um, you don't have to like shift your foot over to the brake all the time. So pretty cool. Uh, and that's something that you know, you wouldn't really know if you're coming from a gas powered vehicle. At least I didn't know. I mean, I've heard of regenerative brakes, uh, but I've never really experienced them. So I'm going to do a little acceleration here because why not? Uh, here we go. It's just fun. Like I have a lot of fun doing that. And then as soon as you let off the accelerator, and that's kind of what I have to get used to, uh, it starts braking. Um, so definitely something I got to get used to, but the more you let off the brake, or the gas I mean the more that it breaks so it's pretty fun to drive like yeah it doesn't make a lot of noise but it's still it's got its pluses to be honest with you uh, and that's coming from somebody who before I went into this video before I drove this vehicle um, I didn't really like electric vehicles and uh, now I'm they're starting to grow on me after driving this and I'm sure a Tesla plaid will really make me start loving uh, these electric cars but I still do need an internal combustion engine in my life as maybe like a weekend driver but as a daily this thing would be fantastic I mean it's super comfortable the driving position is actually really really good um, and a lot better than I would have expected honestly out of this crossover you know what I mean like I almost feel like I'm driving like, not like a sports car, but like something that's got a pretty sporty feel to it because I mean, you point it uh, and it kind of just goes. So uh, yeah, like I said, you can see no um, foot on the brake and it came to a stop and you guys can see it when it goes down like that, that's kind of how much regenerative braking uh, that it is doing. But coming to a stop right here, like I'm at a stop right now. I don't have my foot on the accelerator. I don't have my foot on the brake. Um, so it kind of just holds itself in position by itself. So really, really cool. Yeah, like I said, you got this panoramic moonroof right up top. Beautiful sound system. Sound system sounds fantastic. If you want a little bit better of a sound system, you guys can upgrade to the Twin Ultimate, which comes with a Harman Kardon sound system. Um, but yeah, this thing sounds just fine. If you guys are an audio freak, you're definitely probably going to want to get the Harman Kardon sound system, in my opinion, um, because it's definitely a little bit better than this one. But this one still is plenty fine. Uh, I still think this one sounds very, very good. However, it's definitely not a Harman Kardon sound system, but it still sounds good. So anyway, um, this thing, the way that it drives, you guys can listen to kind of what's going on, because if you don't listen to music, you don't listen to the motor because there is no gas powered motor, uh, but just listen, it's just like super quiet. So pretty cool. Um, like I said, I think this is my first electric vehicle. I think I could say, not that I've ridden in because I have ridden in uh, other electric vehicles, but this is the first one that I've driven. Uh, and I'm, like I said, I'm starting to really like it. 
Um, the steering feel is still very good. It's obviously an electronic uh, steering rack, so it's not hydraulic, but this regenerative braking stuff is kind of fun, to be honest with you. I'm, ha I'm having a little bit of fun messing with it because it's kind of like a challenge. It's hard to like get your brain um, to kind of get into the regenerative braking if you haven't done it. Um, so I haven't really, I haven't pushed the brake pedal once driving this car. Um, but yeah, this infotainment screen works very, very well. Uh, you guys can definitely mess with it while you're driving. Uh, it's not like a super big distraction. Uh, and once you guys start getting to know it just better and better over time, it becomes obviously easier and easier over time. As you would imagine, just like anything, practice makes perfect, uh, and this is no different. Um, but like I said, this makes 402 horsepower and 487 pound-feet of torque. We are going 55 miles an hour right now and I'm gonna give it a little bit of juice like for passing and you guys can feel that 487 pound-feet of torque basically right off the bat I mean once you hit it boom you guys can see it's it's so fun like it's really really fun uh, and the regenerative braking like I said I'm gonna keep going back to it because it's fun to mess with like I like I said I've never messed with it before uh, and it's just it's interesting because I've never done one pedal driving. I'm used to having to shift between the gas pedal and the brake pedal and driving my Camaro, it's a six speed manual. Yes, I can um, decelerate by using the transmission, uh, but this thing's just a little bit different and it's, it's fun. It's a good looking vehicle. Uh, yeah, it kind of does look a little interesting, uh, but it does look very, very good for the design. In my opinion, I think it looks really sporty, especially in this black color. Uh, I haven't seen this in any other colors, um, but Volvo has really nice colors. So I'm sure if you get red, blue, whatever colors they have, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Like I said, coming to a stop without having to put the brake pedal on. Um, so very, very interesting. Like I said, you got your blind spot monitoring. This is a Volvo, so it does have pretty much all the safety tech you could ever want. But it's just a solid driving car. Like everything just feels super, super solid when you push against this kind of stuff. Listen, like there's no, uh, I guess I accidentally clicked that. There's no like creak of the plastic materials or anything like that. Um, very, very good. So very, very solid. Uh, let's do another little acceleration right here just because it's fun and it doesn't attract a lot of attention. Boom. Right up to the speed limit. It's fun, man. Like this would be a fantastic daily driver. Yeah, the range isn't the greatest at 223 miles, uh, but I think that will improve over time. Uh, and I think Volvo has a goal of by 2030, they're gonna be all EVs. So no more gas powered vehicles for Volvo after 2030. Uh, but you know, they're getting into this electric game early uh, and they're doing a pretty good job. Obviously the Model Y has over 300 miles of range. Um, but this is right on par with what Jaguar has to offer as well as what Audi has to offer uh, in this segment. Um, so yeah, like you can't really complain about the range, uh, 223 miles isn't terrible. And if you guys have work, that's more than 150 miles to work, uh, each way, then you probably want to get a gas powered vehicle or a Tesla, you know? Um, but really, really good vehicle. Like I said, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, look, it's letting us know that we're in a school zone. However, those lights are not flashing, um, for the school zone to be 25 miles an hour. Uh, but it's letting us know that it is a school zone. So as you can see right there, uh, lets us know. So that's really cool. That's another safety feature. Shout out Volvo. Um, but yeah, it lets us know our range right here. So let's go into this climate control. You guys can just kind of see what our consumption is per 100 miles. And obviously the more you get on it, the more that it uses, as you guys can tell. There is one pretty decent sized blind spot and it has to do right there. Uh, as well as on this side as well. But like I said, you got your blind spot monitoring at the upper right-hand corner there, right upper left-hand corner of here. Um, so yeah, you got that covered and yeah. One more thing that I do wanna show you guys before we close out this video and we're gonna do a quick zero to 60. Um, so let's skip to that. All right, zero to 60. Sixty. Pretty quick, man. That that definitely feels like a four point three second zero to sixty. Uh, so very, very impressive. I'm very impressed 
by the acceleration and just the overall driving feel of this XC40. So if you guys are looking at the XC40 and you're debating, do I wanna get the gas variant? Do I wanna get the EV variant? Um, I'm an EV hater or was an EV hater and uh, this thing has definitely brought me into starting to like EVs more. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys might feel the same and you guys might weigh your options like how far you live from work or stuff like that. Uh, and maybe the EV option might be for you. And I really did enjoy my time behind the wheel of the XC40 and I'm not just saying that. It's actually a very nice riding vehicle. It soaks up bumps very, very well. Uh, it accelerates exceptionally well. Um, and yeah, it's got all the passing power you need as well. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do that without your guys' help. Please help me make this dream come true. Uh, and I would like you guys to be one of my 10,000 subscribers if you guys want to. So like I said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what your guys' thoughts were on the XC40. But with that said, I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.